Hi friends! In the past, history has taught us the dangers of blending church and state, when during the 4th century, Constantine's power-hungry vision changed the course of Christianity and the world. 17 centuries later, as America embarks on a new stage, are we on the brink of repeating past mistakes? We can now officially project that Donald Trump will become the 47th President of the United States. He will be going back to the White House. fight for you, for your family, and your future, with every breath in my body. We're never going to stop fighting for you, for your dreams, for the future of your children. We're going to lead the greatest comeback in American history under Donald Trump's leadership. God spared my life for a reason to restore America to greatness. Together we can truly make America great again. So let me tell you a story. The year is 312 AD. The Roman Emperor Constantine, on the eve of battle, sees a vision in the sky, a cross with the words, in this sign, conquer. With that vision, Constantine converts to Christianity, and soon after, he unites the church and state, establishing Christianity as the empire's official religion. great event was a turning point in history, one that not only shaped the future of Christianity, but also had a profound long-lasting implications. At first, it seemed like a positive development for Christianity. Constantine's conversion brought legitimacy to the faith, and the church no longer faced persecution. But the union of church and state, while seemingly beneficial, also set the stage for a series of negative consequences that would shape Christian history in unsettling ways. One of the most glaring outcomes was the rise of religious persecution. Then, backed by imperial power, in the aftermath of Constantine's Edict of Milan, which legalized Christianity, a new era of forced conformity began. While Constantine himself supported religious tolerance, his successors, particularly after his death, began to use the power of the state to enforce Christian orthodoxy. Those who disagreed with official church teachings were labeled heretics. The state began to persecute not only pagans, but also those within the Christian community who held different beliefs. Perhaps most notably, the Council of Nicaea in 325 AD, convened by Constantine, sought to establish a unified Christian doctrine. While this council was intended to resolve theological disputes, it also set the stage for a rigid orthodoxy that excluded any form of dissent. Christians who didn't accept the Nicene Creed were persecuted, and those who followed different Christian traditions were often forced to conform or face exile, torture, and even execution. And so, what had started as a movement of faith and freedom became institutionalized, and soon, belief became less about personal conviction and more about political compliance. Fast forwarding to today, we are witnessing a similar dynamic unfold in the United States, where the lines between politics and religion are becoming increasingly blurred. With the recent election of President Donald Trump, there are those who believe that the vision he has, much like Constantine's, is one that ties America's future to Christianity in a powerful and potentially devastating way. Trump has been openly supportive of Christian values, making statements that align with the beliefs of evangelical Christians. He has gained significant backing from religious groups. That no weapon formed against him will be able to prosper. And with many Americans celebrating his administration as one that promises to restore Christian principles to the heart of American governance. But what does this mean for the future of the nation, especially for non-Christian citizens? <laughs> it's so terrifying. How could you do this? How can you claim to be a Christian or anyone of moral values and support someone 
when every word out of his mouth is hate, when he wants to pardon people who took over the capital. And this brings us to Project 2025, an initiative that could reshape America's political landscape. As Trump aims to implement this plan, many fear that it might be setting the stage for the United States to mirror the historical union of church and state, much like Constantine did. A future could be on the horizon, where a single unified type of Christianity is enforced by law, impacting not only government policies, but also the daily lives of all citizens. The implications are far-reaching. While Christianity might celebrate this turn of events, and God bless them, I hope they are right, what about the millions of Americans who do not subscribe to the Christian faith? Or even those who leave Christianity outside the described guidelines, like me? What does this mean for Muslims, Jewish, atheists, Seventh-day Adventists, and all the other people supporting different religious beliefs? As the country shifts towards a system that increasingly intertwines Christian values with the state, the question arises. Will religious freedom become a thing of the past? Let's make America pray again. God bless you and God bless the USA. I personally think that God wants us to come back to him, but he will never, ever, ever, ever force us. So make America pray again seems contrary to what Christ would teach. One figure who has risen to prominence in this era is J.D. Vance, a U.S. senator and devoted advocate for Christian values in government, a Catholic, Vance has voiced support for the integration of Christianity in American life, pushing for policies that align closely with Christian morality. But I, I, I thought what I'd, I'd do this morning is just talk a little bit about how I think about my faith and, and, and my own faith journey, just so you understand me a little bit better, and how I think about hopefully you know that we can integrate that into a governing agenda that will work for the American people. Many are now asking, could Vance, under a Trump administration, push for something even more radical, such as the enforcement of a Sunday law? I was a lot like real estate. It's all about location, location, location. The closer you are to the source, the higher your property value. Centuries from now, when people watch this footage, who will they see smiling just at the edge of the frame? So help me God. Congratulations. This is not just a hypothetical concern. Historically, the concept of a Sunday law has been tied to the idea of enforcing religious observance on the population, much like the blue laws of earlier centuries, which dictated that businesses close on Sundays and people refrain from work. As we move forward in time, the fear arises that Project 2025 could lay the groundwork for similar laws. Of course, at first it might seem harmless. A day of rest and pampering for everyone, regardless of religious beliefs. But what happens when the state begins to enforce Sunday worship, especially under the guise of common good? Will this begin to impact Sabbath keepers, such as Seventh-day Adventists, Jews, who observe the Sabbath on Saturday? Will we be forced to conform to the rest day on Sunday, regardless of our faith? The parallels to historical blue laws are just chilling. Back then, the enforcement of Sunday observance was framed as a moral duty, and those who didn't comply were often ostracized, punished, or persecuted. In the future, could we, the Sabbath keepers, find ourselves blamed for societal ills, cursed with the label of disobedient or unpatriotic, simply because we chose to honor a different day of worship? The claim could be that disasters and calamities occur because of our refusal to comply, just as many were blamed for the fall of Rome when the Christian church began to dominate. This scenario, while chilling, might not be as far as we think. The table is being set for a time when the American state and the Catholic Church 
might unite in a way we've never seen before. Opposites in almost every way have met. And just like Constantine's conversion, where Christianity became entangled with imperial power, we might soon find out that the laws of the land reflect not just Christian principles, but a particular interpretation of those principles. One that could force the population to conform or face serious consequences. Now, let's just pause for a little and consider a deeper question. Is this truly the season of prophetic fulfillment? Could we be witnessing the early signs of the unification of church and state? In the Seventh-day Adventist faith, we see a clear warning in the book of Revelation, particularly in Revelation 13, about a coming time when the beast power will enforce religious laws on all people. The Vatican and the United States, as many of us believe, could unite to impose Catholic laws, including Sunday observance, on a global scale. We don't know when this will happen, but the signs are undeniable. The groundwork is being laid for such a future. Why did I become a Catholic? I mean, there are all these things that I could point to, but you know, one, I really liked that the Catholic Church was just really old. J.D. Vance, he used to be a Christian, whatever that means, and then he became evangelical-ish, but now he's a professing Roman Catholic, baptized into the Roman Catholic Church. Whether we are facing the start of this prophecy's fulfillment, or God will hold back the winds of change for a while longer, only he knows. As Christians, it is crucial that we stay vigilant and be prepared for the times ahead. We must not be fooled by those who seek to use religion as a tool for power, creating a false Christianity that is more about control than faith. Religion and Christianity are the biggest things missing from this country. And I truly believe that we need to bring them back and we have to bring them back fast. I think it's one of the biggest problems we have. That's why our country is going haywire. We've lost religion in our country. If we stand firm in the truth, we will see through these deceptions. As for America, only time will tell how these events will unfold. But one thing is certain, the stage is being set for a merging of church and state, and the world, just like in Constantine's time, will never be the same. You know the nicest thing when people say, it was God, and God came down and he saved you because he wants you to bring America back. So many people say that. And so my friend, if this video opened your eyes to the powerful parallels between past and present, don't let this message fade. Hit that subscribe button so you won't miss the crucial discussions ahead. Because the truth is, the more we understand, the better we can prepare. Give this video a like if you believe we need to stay vigilant in these changing times. And please share this video with someone who needs to hear it. Because knowledge is power. And together we can keep the light of truth shining over darkness. Be blessed, my friend.